Hello and welcome once again to We're Wednesday, when we take a closer look at different artworks in the collection of Samuel E. Weir at Riverbrink Art Museum. My name is Deborah Antonsik and I'm the director curator. Today we're going to look at this work by Jean-Francois Raffaelli titled The Clown, No Date, Oil on Canvas. The painting that we see is a street scene. The titular clown figure wearing a mask dangled something on a pole for the boys to try to grab. So there seems to be some kind of a game that's happening. Perhaps the clown is dangling a sweet on the end of the pole uh, for the boys to try to grab. And there seems to have been something of a scuffle since one of the youths is, uh, has fallen down. Um, so it's not clear uh, just what the game might be, but there seems to be some sort of fun going on. The scene is in grisaille, created, painted in shades of gray, with just the touch of color in the red vest worn by the youth at the extreme right, and also some touches of white heightening and black lines, black that uh, accentuates the clothing of the clown in particular, suggesting he's wearing a dark cloak and pants. Grisaille can be used almost like an underpainting, the artist intending to add color later, but this does not appear to be the case with this painting. Instead, the grisaille seems to have been an aesthetic choice. The technique renders the scene drab, perhaps suggesting evening or dusk or even fog or the atmospheric conditions or time of day or perhaps even smog or air pollution. The painting was acquired in 1980 and it arrived at Riverbrink in January of 1981, not long before Sam Weir passed away. So it was likely the very last acquisition among his final purchases. It came from Sotheby's in New York uh, from a sale and it had been selected by Sam Weir from a photograph in the sale catalog. Although the grisaille renders the scene a bit drab and colorless, it is playful and perhaps something about the youthful exuberance on display appealed to Sam Weir. Although there are several works by his contemporaries, the Impressionists from the late 19th century, this is the only work by Raffaelli in the collection. Jean-Francois Raffaelli was known as a French realist painter, a sculptor and a printmaker. He also worked as an actor and a writing. He was born in Paris in 1850. And here we're looking at his a photograph of his studio, the artist in his studio. Raffaelli decided to become a painter at the age of 20. One of his landscape paintings was accepted for exhibition at the Salon the prestigious annual exhibition held by the Royal Academy in Paris. It was an auspicious start for an artist, and in 1871, he began to study with Jean-Léon Jérôme at the École de Beaux-Arts, but his formal study lasted just three months. Raffaelli exhibited with the Impressionists, but the term realist is applied to his work from the mid-1870s when he began to focus on the underclass as a subject, the underclass of workers and peasants, the dispossessed and uprooted in the modernization of Paris. We associate realism with the impulse to record and convey facts, often the facts, the realities of contemporary social ills. Artists such as Gustave Courbet, whose stonebreakers we're looking at here, found important subjects in the everyday, a source of artistic truth in the everyday experiences of life. In the Stonebreakers, we see two laborers at work on road construction, both unsuitable for the kind of backbreaking labor that is required. One is too old, the other quite young. In this way, the artist exposes the deprivations of modern life the size of the painting was intended to shock, bringing the subject of inequality to the forefront. 
The size of the canvas puts it in the same category as a history painting. It is a very political painting, in other words, arriving at the Salon just one year, 1849, one year after the revolutions of 1848. And Courbet would become an even more divisive figure during the Paris Commune uprising during the siege of Paris amidst the Franco-Prussian War. Raffaelli painting in the 1870s parallels in art, the literary styles of Emile Zola, the focus on the anti-heroic, anti-romantic, what's described as naturalist depictions of the alienations of the individual in modern society. The absinthe drinkers that I'm showing you here, initially titled Les Deux Classes from 1881 is in the collection of the Fine Arts Museum in San Francisco. During this period of the 1870s, Raffaelli focuses attention on the poverty at the edges of the great city of the banlieue. He produced studies of the downtrodden, the impoverished, in what was seen as a political statement, pushing for a return to realism. 10 years after the Paris Commune and Courbet's exile to Switzerland to escape the fines and penalties for his role in the destruction of the Vendôme during the Commune. When Edgar Degas invited Raffaelli to show with the Impressionists in 1880 and 1881, he was attempting to expand the exhibition to include the realists. It is possible to see a parallel with Impressionism and the attempt to capture time through, for instance, Monet's rapid brushstrokes capturing fleeting impressions, expanded to portray arrested time, time standing still, as we see with these two individuals in the cafe, time standing still for the impoverished, the forgotten, and the downtrodden. Raphael dominated the Impressionist exhibition with many large canvases, which made him unpopular with the other artists. And when we look at this painting, The Absinthe Drinkers, it's also clear that Raffaelli had more in common with Courbet's Stonebreakers than with Impressionism. Much of this evident in his work from this period. Raffaelli's subject is the working class, the marginalized who were expelled from the city by the housemanization, the renovation of Paris, forced out to the banlieue, to the, suburb, to the suburbs. Absinthe was a very popular drink favored by Bohemian artists and dancers and both Edward Manet in 1859 and Edgar Degas in 1876 depicted the, the consumption of absinthe and submitted these paintings to exhibition. Absinthe also features in Emile Zola's celebrated novel La Sommeur. Although solitary, Degas' drinkers are situated in a Paris cafe, the bohemian world of artists, and wear fashionable clothing. In contrast, Raffaelli focuses on the effects of the drink, the isolation and the desolation of the scene, and the effects of addiction. Their clothing and footwear displays their poverty. Invented in Switzerland, Absinthe is a spirit derived from plants, including the flowers and, low, and leaves of the Artemisia absinth absinthium, or grand wormwood, together with green anise, sweet fennel, and other medicinal and culinary herbs. In the late 19th century, absinthe was the focus of the temperance movement in France. It had a very high alcohol content and was reputed to cause hallucinations but has since been found to be no more harmful than other alcoholic drinks. So a popular aperitif favored by the Bohemian Cafe Society, by 1881, it was the drink of poverty because wine production had been affected by disease and a staple of French life had become very expensive as a consequence. Absinthe was also associated with the Paris Commune who were accused of carrying out drunken rampages while in control of the city. Therefore, drinking absinthe was associated with revolutionary activity and poverty. 
Raffaele described his theory of realism as characterism, an attempt to capture the essence of an individual, the rag pickers, the marginalized, in scenes reminiscent of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. He was influenced by neo-impressionists of Seurat, Signan, and the positivist philosophy of Hippolyte Apolyte Taine. His work was celebrated by the noted critic J.K. Hosmans. Raffaelli won the Legion of Honor in 1889. But his subsequent work shifted from the suburbs to the city itself. And here we're looking at Raffaelli's Notre Dame from the Quai de la Tournelle from 1899-1902 in the Cleveland Museum of Art collection. Raffaelli also made a number of sculptures known today only through photographs. Suggestive of his growing success, Raffaelli traveled to the US and served on the, journey of, on the jury of the Carnegie International Exhibition in Pittsburgh in 1899. He also completed commissions for wealthy art patrons in the US. So Raffaelli enjoyed a successful career as a second tier impressionist with an international following as a painter of genre scenes. His earlier reputation as a critically acclaimed member of the avant-garde was overlooked and eventually forgotten. Raffaelli died in Paris in 1824. So the clown is undated, but it seems to fit with Raffaelli's later work the playful scene on the streets of Paris, a genre scene. But the grisaille makes something, makes the painting something of a transition between the work explo exploring the gritty banlieue and the endlessly popular street scenes of Paris that followed and for which Raffaelli is known best today. Thank you and I hope you've enjoyed this latest episode of We Are Wednesday and I look forward to speaking with you again.